TVs hadn't been in, uh, in my home very long. I remember my aunt first TV was, I think it was about 49 or 50 when, when, when she got her first one. But I kept thinking, oh, I'd love to do that. But there was never any hope. I'd never seen a black person on TV at the time. No way could you get on TV if you were the wrong color. My life has just sort of evolved from high school, at Lincoln High School, we went on a local TV program called, I think, something like Who's Here? It was a Saturday program where they aired um, high schools across Dallas. And they asked me to write the script and to narrate the script for the, Bur the Harry T. Burley Choir that was going to appear on the show. I was told that I did a very good job. And the principal called me in to, to compliment me on the job that I did. And then at graduation that spring, he introduced me and said, that's Miss Billy Subas. We are so proud of her. And we know we have a TV star here. And for some reason, he said TV star. And I thought, oh, really? I'd love to be a TV star. And that's how I happened to really get the bug. And I got a fellowship to attend Atlanta University. So uh, coming here enabled me to have access to other causes, people, places, and the like. I was at Atlanta University in the library, Trevor Arnett Library when I accidentally met a professor from Morehouse College named Dr. Samuel W. Williams. We were married sometime later after that. And one day I called in my husband to tell him, you know, I would, I've seen today in Georgia on a few occasions when I didn't have classes. And I think I could do that. I can do what I see this lady doing. I believe I can do it. So he said, if you think you can do it, then do it. And all of that helped me realize that you just got to have the guts to get out there and try to get somebody to listen to you. I went on the show uh, today in Georgia, becoming the first black woman in the Southeast to co-host. It was a learning on the job experience for me, strictly learning. And I made so many mistakes until I was afraid one day I was going to walk in the WSB studio and they were going to tell me, go home, honey, this is not for you. And it might not have been, but I did open the door. And I thought to myself, if I have done nothing more than show some little black girl that she can be on this too. And I felt that was important. I only met Henry in 1971, after my first husband died. But Bill and Bowden, who was the producer, had asked if I would see if I could get him to come on the show. Well, to be honest, I didn't know anything about baseball. I had not been, <laughs> I had not been to a baseball game at that time. But I, I had heard of him, and I wanted very much to participate in the interview. I didn't know why the pitcher was so important <laughs> to the game and that when the games were won, usually it was due to the pitching and not just the players. He was telling me this and I'm saying, oh, really? <laughs> I thought that the home runs did the trick. No, 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 no. Do you want me to help you formulate some questions? Yes, I would appreciate it. So he did. I wanted badly to be a television personality. And I was learning. I, it was, I had never been to school for it. How do you get there if you don't have classes of somebody who's on the side to sort of encourage you and teach you? He became that person for me. He became uh, my mentor in a way. 
And he encouraged me. In a lot of ways, he was a gentle giant. He was not the most romantic person, but with a kind of gentle softness, he always made you feel warm. And I just adored him, what he stood for and how he conducted his life. I was extremely proud of him and his accomplishments. After we were married in 1973, I made sure I was at most of the games because I found it to be fun. I didn't even know it was so much fun until I started going. I got to meet a lot of people. I got to go to a lot of places, and I did a lot of things in the process. I, I met a lot of movie stars and you name it. Jane Fonda even kept <laughs> crossed my path. Harry Belafonte, Sidney Poitier I interviewed, and Hank Aaron crossed my path. I would never would have met Henry if, if I had not been on Today in Georgia. I'm sure of that. And the only reason I left when I left was because Henry was traded to back to Milwaukee. And they offered me a little job at WTMJ where I had my own show called Billy. And during the two seasons, I held my own. And I got to know the Milwaukee community. And one of the first people, though, that I loved who came on my show had just won the Wimbledon. That was Arthur Ashe. I thought, oh, I made it now. I, this, I, I know I'm going to do this. I can do this. And I think it was Dr. Marshall who kind of turned that light on about you know, having been on television for a, a half hour. And that excited me. And that made me even want to go to college more because I knew I needed to get an education. And I have had in my life the desire to really help youngsters go to college and follow their dreams. Henry had help. I had help. We didn't have to take this journey by ourselves. We didn't get where we were or are by ourselves. So we started the Hank Aaron Chase and the Dream Foundation, and we started working with kids between 9 and 12 to help them get that background to help them begin the process of imagination. If you can dream it, you may be able to attain it. A lot of them would never have gone to college, one, and a lot of them never would have been able to even pursue their dream. But it was a joy and a pleasure to be able to lend them a hand. When you stop to think about it, Service is really the price we pay for the space we occupy. And so I've got to try somehow to keep it going. And I think I will and can and I must uh, in Henry's memory. And I know Henry would be satisfied. He would be very happy with what I'm still trying to do. I wanted stated that she always tried to help wherever she could. That's what I would like on my tombstone. She tried to help. That's it.